Hello, welcome back to Too Sweet MTG, and welcome to Instant Deck Techs. In this series, we go over everything you need to build a certain commander. We'll go over the strategies and the types of cards needed you need to get the deck working. Any cards we mention will be down in the description below. In this video, we're going to be looking at Kibo, Uktapi Prince. It is 2 and a green for a 2 2 legendary creature, Monkey Noble. It has tap, and each player creates a colourless artifact token named Banana. The Banana has tap, sacrifice this artifact to add red or green, and you gain 2 life. Kibo also has, whenever an artifact an opponent controls is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a plus plus on counter on each creature you control that is an ape or a monkey. And then finally, whenever Kibo attacks, defending player sacrifices an artifact. This is going to be an ape and monkey tribal deck with a smashing artifact sub theme. Quite a lot of the monkeys and apes that already exist blow up artifacts, so it's very helpful that Kibo not only rewards us for doing that by giving our board plus plus on counters, but it also even taps to give our opponents some lovely artifact banana tokens for us to break for them. Those banana tokens are really solid ramp in the deck as well. They basically make Kibo a Lana War Elf that lets us store the mana until we actually need it. The fact that we can just keep the bananas there until we need to cast some big dumb spell is really, really nice. In terms of artifacts, we're not going to stop just with the bananas. We're also going to be playing other ways of giving our opponents some artifacts, only for us to break them open to make our team stronger, so we can make them huge to swing through and win the game. The first thing we're going to do, because we're just so nice, is play some cards that let us gift more artifacts to our opponents. Little will they know that we're only doing this so we can break them open in front of them. First up, we have Thousand Year Elixir and Mage Right Stone. These let us untap Kibo, so we can tap him again to make two bananas a turn. Next up is Jolene, the Plunder Queen. This gives everyone a treasure token whenever someone attacks one of our opponents. Absolutely perfect for the deck. The fact that we get an extra treasure when we do this will really help us ramp ahead as well. For something a little bit smaller, we have Marching Duodrone, a fine little creature that comes down and when it swings give all of our opponents a treasure token. You then also have Curse of Opulence and Descent into Evanus. The Curse is a great way to get people swinging at an opponent while netting them and us some gold tokens, and Descent into Avernus can really end a game of Commander quickly, as the damage and treasure tokens that everyone gets snowballs very fast, perfect for buffing up our Monkey and Ape Horde. We then also have Genesis Chamber. This will make everyone a ton of additional artifact creatures over the course of a game, that again, we can blow up to make our own board bigger. All the cards that we've mentioned, as well as Kibo, make our opponents artifact tokens. This is where a card like Primal Vigor comes into the mix. A lot of the time, the fact that this is symmetrical for all players is a bit of a downside compared to cards like Doubling Season, but the fact that in this deck we want our opponents to make more tokens makes this card perfect. The fact it also doubles up our plus one plus one counters is going to be really important as well. Again, yes it is symmetrical, but we'll by far make the most use out of it of anyone. The other thing we can do is turn our opponent's other stuff into artifacts, which then turn some of our smashing monkeys into doom blades. You have liquid metal coating and liquid metal torque, which are both really solid includes. The fact the torque is also ramp is just fantastic. You then also have mere land shaper. This can turn lands into artifacts, turning our monkeys into stone rains, and being able to completely nerf an opponent out of the game. And then you have Mycosynth Lattice, which turns everything into artifacts. This means whenever anything enters the graveyard from the battlefield, our team will get bigger. A fetch land, a creature dying, a planeswalker being destroyed, all of those. This is very powerful. With all the work out of the way giving our opponents some nice shiny artifacts, it's now time to break them open to buff up our team. First up we have a whole host of monkeys and apes that destroy artifacts. These are absolutely perfect. They blow up artifacts and then get buffed by them as well. They're everything that we want to do. What's nice is that there's plenty of them all up and down the curve. We can also top them up with some other ways of blowing up artifacts. Overloading a Vandal Blast could put so many counters onto our team that it's almost a win condition. Artifact Mutation can also leave us with a nice little board state of blockers, and then Bane of Progress is a great backup plan if we've ever given too many artifacts away and don't have Kibo around. Next up is the rest of our monkeys. These fill in the gaps and give us the board state that we need to grow with Kibo. These are the soldiers in our monkey ape army. They'll be the ones getting the damage in. The base to get in the deck isn't too high. Are they a monkey or an ape? Yes. Perfect, get in my deck. Obviously, some are better than others, with Simeon Simulacrum, Zodiac Monkey, Gorilla Chieftain and Grun the Lonely King being among my favourites. Remember that all of these will be getting bigger very quickly, so even the one mana creatures will become solid threats, and the earlier that they can come out, the more counters that we can put on them. Then we have Ancient Silverback, which, no word of a lie, is probably my favourite magic card ever. It was a standout card in the first magic deck I ever had as a kid, and is the reason I might be building this deck myself, so I get a chance to play with it again. That regenerate body is just awesome. You also have a card like Hidden Gibbons, which very quickly turns from being a one mana enchantment into a 4 4 ape. You then finally have Monkey Cage. This has the potential to make a lot of monkeys, but generally speaking, I would want us to be the one to play the next creature. Paying 5 for this, only for our opponent to then play a 1 drop, sounds a bit miserable, but if you play this and then cash in a load of bananas to cast something else big, it'll make us a whole board state of monkeys. Next up, we have our card draw section. 
Like with most decks, we're generally looking between 8 to 10 bits here. First up, we have Viridian Revel. This works with everything that the deck is trying to do, by rewarding us with letting us draw a card whenever an artifact an opponent controls goes to the graveyard. Absolutely perfect for the deck. Next up is Realm Walker, which lets us pick a creature type and then let us cast them from the top of our library, which is some great card advantage. The one drawback is that you have to pick either Ape or Monkey. Unfortunately, you can't pick both. So make a mental note when you're putting the deck together to see which one you have more of. Fortunately, as this is a shapeshifter, it does count as both of them, so it will get the counters from Kibo. Then we have Silverback Shaman, a decent ape body with trample that when it dies replaces itself with a card. Exactly what we're after. Then we have Idol of Oblivion, which with their tap ability of Kibo making a token every turn cycle, basically means that this will draw us a card every turn. We also then have Well of Lost Dreams. Because the banana tokens sack to generate mana and gain us two life, we can cash in each one to this to draw us a card. A really nice little interaction that can power us into the late game. And then because this is a creature heavy deck, both Beast Whisperer and Guardian Project will draw us cards whenever we cast an ape or a monkey. Again, just keeping us going to make us that board state that we want. When we have that board state, we can use cards like Inspiring Call, because most of our creatures will end up with a counter on them because of Kibo, and then Return of the Wild Speaker and Shamanic Revelation to draw an absolute bucket load of cards in one go for when we're looking for that big turn. Then finally, you also have access to just solid bits of card draw in the form of Faithless Looting and Harmonize. Just really nice tried and tested spells for when you just need to find some answers. Moving over to our ramp, we have some cool options to get to the 8 to 10 bits that we need to make the deck work. First up is Simeon Spirit Guide. If it's early, we can exile it from our hand to get our commander out of turn faster, or late game we can just play it as an ape, ready to get pumped up. We then have Kadama of the West Tree. The counters that we put on our team will make them all modified, so that when they deal combat damage to a player, we get to go find a basic land from our deck and put it into play. Then we have Jahira, Friend of the Forest. This lets all of our own banana tokens just tap to generate green mana, meaning we don't actually have to cash them in. We can just let that bunch grow bigger to make us repeated mana turn after turn. We then can also look at a card like Goblin Archaeomancer, which makes all of our green and red spells cost one less. Absolutely perfect for helping us dump out a board of apes. Then we finally have our rampant growth effects. These are cards that let us go through the deck to find lands and put them into play. A cornerstone of any deck running green. Next up is our interaction section. This is on top of the monkey smash cards that we went over earlier, as these will be answering things other than artifacts. First up we have Ravenous Baboons, a nice answer to any powerful non-basic lands out there on a monkey body. For some instant speed interaction, we have the always solid Beast Within and Chaos Warp. Perfect for when you just need to deal with something. Then a nice little board wipe with some added utility is Brotherhood's End. It can take out a board state of tokens, especially once ours has grown out of reach, or it can double up as a wrath for all the banana tokens out there for a massive anthem to grow our own board. For some other board wipes, we have Chain Reaction and Blasphemous Act. Really good options at clearing things off the board and resetting the game. Then like with most decks that revolve around the commander, we do need a little bit of protection to help keep our monkey prints alive and swinging. Starting off with Lightning Grease and Swiftfoot Boots, as solid in this deck as any that needs them. Then you have some instant speed options with Tamiyo Safekeeping and Heroic Intervention. Really cool cards that can give us that key protection at a moment's notice. And then because look at that gorilla, we have Guttural Response. I guarantee your opponents will not be expecting you to counter their counter spells with this lad. Ok, we've got our key bits sorted, let's go over some dedicated ways to push the deck over the top and win the game. First up is Harden Scales. Making our board state grow twice as quickly will just be fantastic, and quickly mean our opponents won't be able to keep up. For some more counter fun, we have Defiler of Vigor. It lets us get our green creatures out super quickly, and then pumps up our team even more. Then when we have a nice beefy board state, we have cards like Beastmaster Ascension, Overwhelming Stampede, and the OG itself, Overrun. These have been ending games of magic for years, and in this deck they will be no exception. On a different axis, we have Magnetic Mine and Sardian Avenger. These ping players when artifacts are put into the graveyard, great at bringing everyone's life total down nice and low. Then we have Reckless Fireweaver and Ingenious Artillerist. These deal damage to an opponent whenever the artifacts come into play under our control, turning our bananas into damage. To get some life back for ourselves, you have Fangreng Marauder. Getting an extra 5 life every time any artifact goes from the battlefield to the graveyard is insane in this deck. This will genuinely net us so much life that we'll never get caught. Then finally, you have Hellkite Tyrant, which has the nice alternative win condition of winning the game if we ever start an upkeep with 20 or more artifacts, on top of a 6-5 flying trample body. Our opponents will either have to decide if they want to sack all the bananas to grow our board, or let us steal them and potentially win the game after we've untapped. Rounding off the deck with some utility lands, we have a couple of cool options that we can go over. First up we have Treetop Village. It's a land that can importantly turn itself into an ape for when we need some additional beef. For yet more beef, we have Kessig Wolf Run, a really solid mana sink that can pump some bananas into a creature to get it huge to deal more damage. Then there is Moss Swart Bridge, basically a free bit of card advantage that lets us cast something for just a single green, as getting to that 10 power required will be really easy in this deck with our Monkey Horde. Then for some additional card draw, we have War Room, a really solid card that we'd be happy to pay the life for. And then finally we have Inventor's Fair. 
Because of all those artifact bananas floating around, it'll be really easy to get this activated so we can go and find the best artifact from our deck. The rest of your mana base will be very dependent on what you have available to you. We recently released a video with some advice on building a deck with a budget mana base, which might be of help. Until next time, please like, share, and subscribe, and let us know down in the comments if there are any commanders you'd like to see a deck tech on. Thank you very much for watching.